Remember that birthday party when you got really, really drunk? Or the day you walked down the aisle looking into the eyes of the man you love? Remember the day you held your firstborn in your arms for the very first time and named him? Or that Thanksgiving party that ended in a huge family fight? Remember the day you walked your daughter down the aisle and tried so hard not to cry? Remember, we use the word so lightly, so casually. But what if you couldn't remember? And slowly, there was impairment in your capacity to have a conversation, to move, to think, and you became more restless and less capable of emotion. This is the plight of those that struggle with the most common neurodegenerative disorder affecting 47 million individuals worldwide. It's a disorder without a cure, Alzheimer's disease. Looking into the brain of someone with Alzheimer's disease or AD, we would see a deterioration of the neural connections, so much so that the amount of brain tissue found would be less than that in a normal human brain. Furthermore, there would be a buildup of misfolded proteins known as beta amyloid plaques, which are a hallmark of AD. If I asked you to hold your breath, how long would you last? Maybe 30 seconds? Maybe a minute? But after a while, you really need oxygen. The oxygen that we depend on sometimes reacts in our systems to form free radicals, which are oxygen-containing compounds that have unpaired electrons. Free radicals are extremely dangerous. They snatch electrons from vital cellular components, leaving them destabilized. The cellular damage resulting from this oxidative stress can sometimes be so great that it triggers cell suicide. Although the causes of AD and other related dementias are relatively unknown, Recent research implicates this oxidative stress as a possible mechanism in the development of neurodegeneration. So maybe antioxidants such as coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10, which is naturally found in the mitochondria of our cells, are the answer. Research on CoQ10's efficacy in combating oxidative stress have yielded positive results. However, the oil-soluble nature of the compound means that very high doses, far in excess of FDA regulations, are required for effective treatment. Fortunately, our lab's NRC collaborators have synthesized a water-soluble formulation of coenzyme Q10 known as Ubisol Q10, which is much more bioavailable. In the past, our lab has tested the efficacy of Ubisol Q10 in various rat models of Parkinson's disease with great results. So now we would like to ask the questions, can Ubisol Q10 halt or slow down the neurodegeneration seen in AD? Will it be effective in a transgenic in vivo mouse model of Alzheimer's disease, and how exactly is it working? The transgenic mice we've been working with were predisposed to develop early onset Alzheimer's disease through the introduction of two genes that are partly responsible for the genetic cases of AD that are seen in humans. The transgenic mice we've been working with were predisposed to develop early onset Alzheimer's disease through the introduction of two genes that are partly responsible for genetic cases of AD that are seen in humans. The mice were monitored for 14 months with control mice receiving regular drinking water and experimental group mice receiving Ubisol Q10 supplemented water. Following the sacrifice of the mice, biochemical analyses showed that the circulating levels of beta amyloid plaques had fallen. Further tests to assess the gene expression of the different groups and the neuron densities and plaque levels in the brain are currently underway. Ultimately, we hope that Ubisol Q10 can be a possible treatment for those struggling with AD and so that we can, as the Alzheimer's Society puts it, be there for those who are still here. Thank you.